All right, so this is our entryway nook, and it's the very first thing that you see when you walk into the house, and it's not much to look at. So today, we're gonna dress it up with a mid-century modern console table with a floating top. Let's get started. Welcome to the Comar Project. This video is sponsored by Wondrium. Your brain is gonna love this place. All right, so we got our walnut, and this is a quarter walnut, which means that it's two inches thick, way too thick for what we're gonna be using. So we gotta start milling this thing down and make it thinner. Let's do it. When it comes to building cabinets, and this is exactly what we're doing here, we're making two separate cabinets, but I've always done it out of plywood and just veneered the faces. I've made doors and drawers out of solid wood, but never the entire piece. So I'm stepping into some uncharted waters. Here. So far, you've seen me milling up the roughs on walnut, getting two faces square to each other on the joiner. Then I can take it over to the table saw, rip a parallel side, and finally, at the planer, I can finish off with that last side. And this gives me a nice square board to work with. All right, guys, so we got our beautiful walnut all milled up. Well, it's not fully milled up yet because this is rough sawn lumber, and when you first expose wood like this, you want to let it sit overnight and let it marinate because it's going to breathe and it's going to do some funky wonky things on you by the next day. So we're going to go through this entire process again tomorrow. Hopefully it doesn't move too much, but let it sit overnight and just let it breathe. Let it, let it do its thing. So part two tomorrow. I'm gonna spare you guys having to watch that second milling process again, but luckily it didn't move too much and I was able to resaw it on the bandsaw with no issues. Also, you might be wondering why I'm not using a fence on my bandsaw and that has a lot to do with my blade drifting quite a bit and without the fence, I can correct the drift as I cut it. Now, I mean, I've tried to fix it a couple times, but I just got used to using it without the fence. Plus, we're gonna be planing it down to about three quarters of an inch anyway, so as long as I get close, somewhere around seven eighths of an inch thick, I'll be fine. After I got my boards all flat, I started sorting them, keeping the color similar for each panel and making sure that I alternate the grain direction. This will help to prevent the panels from warping after the glue up. This is not foolproof because wood is gonna do what wood is gonna do, but it definitely helps. Now I did have some issues moving forward and you guys will see how I kind of rectified that a little bit later in the video, but it, it does help. Since the main panels for the cabinet are fairly long at 65 inches and that's oversized, I'm gonna cut those down later. I put a couple dominoes in just to align everything during the glue up. Now, they're not necessary. The glue is plenty strong to hold this panel, but it just makes things a little bit easier and keeps it from sliding during the glue up. And I even use some calls because if you put too much pressure on those clamps, even though you have dominoes, the outside two boards can bend up or down depending on how much pressure you actually put on the clamp. So to kind of help with that, the calls are a great, very cheap alternative. After the glue had dried, I could take all the panels out of the clamps and start cleaning them up and getting them down to final dimension. And luckily, I have a drum sander, which makes this process so much easier, but it's a little boring just standing there or watching the boards go through over and over and over again. It's painful. So Stella and I decided to go outside and cause some trouble. Oh, wait. She's such a good goose chaser. If only she were that motivated not to eat shoes. But she's still a puppy and super cute, so I guess we'll let her slide on this one. Back on a cabinet, I trimmed off the edges of the panels on my miter saw to a final length, which is 58 inches and it's time to start cutting in some finger joints. I started off by setting the height of my dado blade with a cutoff piece from the panel. This will give me the length of each finger and I always set it a hair higher than the material thickness so that later I can sand them flush.
Then I started cutting all the finger joints on the side panels first and quickly realized I was getting a whole lot of tear out on the back side. And this has to do with my blade being set a bit lower than the relief slot on the back of my sled from previous projects. So to fix this issue, I glued in a scrap piece of wood and then I can run my blade through it again, leaving me the exact backing I need. And for another safety measure, I also scored the panels at the finger joints. So if any tear out does happen, it'll break at that score line. After I glued in the backing and scored the remaining panels, all the cuts turned out great, but I did have two panels that I started off with that did have some tear out still and I wasn't about to remake them. So a little CA glue and we're back in business. Now, I don't know about you guys, but every time I cut finger joints, I always have one or two panels that I cut wrong because I placed them in the wrong orientation. So this time I marked where all the fingers should be and I even labeled each panel with the corresponding one. Labeling like this just makes it a little bit more dummy proof for me and I need dummy proof 24 seven. So from now on, I'm labeling everything. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna cut the dados for the inside panels of the cabin. I set up my dado stack to be the same thickness as the panels and ran a couple of test pieces. You don't want that dado to be so tight where you're actually forcing that panel into it because when you apply glue, that those fibers are gonna expand and it's gonna make it pretty much impossible to get it assembled. So a hair looser dado is just right and it'll make a tight joint when everything is glued up. All right, so now that I got everything mocked up, I got my dados all set. Whoa, poof. Whoo, that hit me right in the eye. Let me clean you guys off. All better, all better. All right, so now that I got the dado stack all set up, the height is all accurate, I know I got a good tight fit, it's time to actually cut the dados into the cabinet. And this is a little bit stressful because I put so much work into it, I don't wanna mess it up. So, wish me luck. Let's cut a dado. So, first panel, no problem. Second panel, good to go. But the third one, you guys can see that it's a little funky wonky. It's, it's cupped. I can pull it straight during the glue up, but cutting the dado presented a problem. I even used some dumbbells to try to keep it down, but it still cut unevenly, meaning it was good in some spots and shallower in the others. And you can actually see the rise in that dado as I run my square inside of it. And the only way I know how to fix it is with a router plane because it only references a small section of the panel and you can slowly lower that blade till you get the optimal depth you're looking for. After a few test fits, I'm ready for the dreaded finger joint glue up. First, I sanded the insides of all my panels and I put down painter's tape to catch any excess glue squeeze out from the joints. Now, glue ups can be a bit stressful because you're working against the clock. So being prepared with everything laid out, clamps ready is the key. I even go as far as practicing for the glue up and I know it looks really weird, but it works. And as long as it's just weird and not crazy, it's okay. That was a serious glue up. All right, let's make some drawers. Depending on the type of slides that you're using, whether they're side mounted or under mount, it's gonna determine the size of your drawer in reference to the opening. And since my slides didn't come with any instructions, there was a little trial and error. 
but I was able to figure out the correct sizing, mill up my walnut, and I can start cutting the finger joints. And this time we're doing it on the router table with a sled from Rockler. It's the same process as the table saw, just a little bit smaller, which makes it perfect for finger joining drawers. After cutting fingers on all the panels, I needed to cut a slot to accept the drawer bottom. And I'm doing what's called a plunge cut, where you slowly lower the workpiece onto the bit so that way you don't cut through the edges. This way you can get the bottom in and not see any cuts from the side. And speaking of drawer bottoms, I ended up getting two sheets of quarter inch walnut plywood. I couldn't find any two sided half inch walnut plywood by me. So a whole lot of glue and everything heavy in my shop and we got ourselves two sided half inch walnut plywood. It's not ideal, but I was planning on putting a plywood backing on the larger cabinet either way. So this worked out pretty well. After the drawers were glued up, I sanded down the fingers and made a perfect matching wood putty out of some walnut dust from the sander and some dark glue. When it dried, I sanded it all off, revealing those beautiful finger joints. And I know they don't compare to dovetails, but there's something about that end grain sticking up in walnut that just looks so good. Next I can install the undermount slides which require a 1 inch slot to be cut out and a 3 8 inch hole drilled to accept this hook on the back of the slides. I placed the slide on the bottom and gave it a general tap with my mallet to index where to drill the hole. You just want to make sure you don't actually drill through the back of your drawer. So when installing these, you're not actually screwing them to the drawer. There is a front clip that the slide locks into and along with the hook in the hole, that's what I'm calling it, that's the only thing that's holding the drawer in place. Then the slide is mounted to the inside with 5 8 inch hardware screws and the drawer can then be clipped in. It's an interesting way of mounting slides and I still don't know how I feel about them. I may or I may not like them. What do you guys think? Do you prefer undermount slides or side mounted slides? Go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. All right, so for the face frames, I went with leopard wood or what some people call lace wood. I placed super glue tape on the drawer front and then I can press the drawer face onto it, holding it temporarily. Then I can slide the drawer out and drive a inch and a quarter screw in from behind. With the drawers done, I can turn my attention to the doors for the bottom cabin. After resawing a large piece of leopard wood, I glued two panels together, creating a book match pattern. Then with a concealed hinge jig, I was able to drill two holes to accept the soft closed hinges that I'm gonna install. And at this point in the project, I get really excited because I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. This has been taking a couple of weeks and now I can finally mount the doors. And everything went fine until I came into the shop the next day and realized that one of the doors had warped severely on me. Now, things like that will happen. And to me, they happen all the time. So just got to figure out a workaround. So I decided that I'm gonna sand the front of the door flush with the cabinet and leave the inside warp. You're never gonna see it anyway, and the door's still gonna function well. All right, that was a fairly painless fix, and I think it's gonna work. But more importantly, I can take this skill now and add it to my woodworking repertoire, because learning never stops. And that's why I'm excited to keep working with Wondrum, the sponsor of this project.
Wonderum is an online platform with thousands of courses, documentaries, series, and much, much more. Everything you ever wanted to know about is available to you now at the click of a mouse. I personally have been struggling with thumbnails for as long as I can remember for videos just like this one. So to improve that skill set, I'm diving into Photoshop, a complete guide by Ben Wilmore, a Photoshop Hall of Famer. I know, it's a thing. I'm currently on lesson nine, which talks about retouching pictures in Photoshop. So now I know how to remove objects from a photo, which is super helpful when making thumbnails. This is one of my first thumbnails. I know, but they're getting better. So if you guys want to support the channel, go ahead and check out wonderum.com or you can click the link in the description below. Thank you Wonderum for supporting what I do. Now let's go make some legs. After cutting a leg template out, I can attach it to a rough cut in the leopard wood and with a flush trim bit on the router, I can cut the final shape of the support legs. And since there are two sets of legs, I wanted to connect them using a wedged mortise and tenon stretcher. So a wedged mortise and tenon is a fairly simple thing to make, but it looks very intimidating. So a lot of people tend to stay away from them. You actually don't need to get everything perfectly tight. You just want the sides to be a good fit. The up and down part of the tenon, you want it to be smaller than the mortise opening because the wedges do all the work. They spread the tenon till it fits perfectly and looks amazing. This is one of my favorite woodworking joints, and I mean, the finished product speaks for itself. Before I put the leg assembly on, I wanted to install the backing by routing in the rabbit. For the bottom cabinet, I'm using the glued up half inch double sided walnut plywood that we use for the drawer fronts. But for the top floating cabinet, it's going to get three quarter inch thick solid walnut. For this backing, I'm putting in a significant amount of glue, pretty much to cover all the rabbits because this is what's going to hold this cabinet in the air and we don't want it to fall. Well, that turned out great. You got a cabinet. All right guys, so the console is complete and I'm super excited about how it turned out. And it gives our entryway a little bit of a classier look instead of just, you know, throwing shoes in the corner. Now, this project took a little bit longer than I expected. It was about a month in total, but I wanted to make sure that the design was classy yet still fun and timeless. Who knows, maybe one of my kids will put it in their house one of these days. Probably not, doesn't have a screen in it. If you guys want to build one of these consoles, I have a set of blueprints available for you at comarproject.com or you can click the link in the description below. I want to thank Wonderum for supporting what I do and obviously you guys. And if this is your first time here, go hit that subscribe, the bell, all those good buttons so that you guys don't miss upcoming projects. Thank you so much for joining me on this experience. I'll see you guys next time. Come here.